John specifically has seven miracles, seven te teachings, and seven stories about Jesus. And he uses this to emphasize the point that Jesus is God. That is the significant message of the entire book of John. To this regard, uh, John, Jesus, uh, John quotes Jesus introducing himself with the word or the phrase, I am. By using this phrase, I am, Jesus equates himself to the I am, God. In the book of Exodus, uh, when, when Moses uh, was with God and he says, hey, when I go back to these guys and tell them uh, that, you know, I've had all these things, who, tell them, uh, who do I say sent me and say, I am sent you? I, I am, and God responded, I am who I am. Now, Many years later, millennia later, John invokes this similar title when describing Jesus. He says, point out, these are some of the teachings Jesus had. He, he said, I am, at specific times. I am the bread of life. He, he said that I am the light of the world. He says that I am the gate. He even says, I, I am the good shepherd. And last week, he says, I am the resurrection. Hey, hey. Today is another one. And this is interesting. This one, he doesn't say in, the, in public. He says this in a group. His, his, his bogey, his squad. Okay? Now he was in the disciples in the upper room. A few days later from this, he was going to be crucified. And here, there's a three-in-one claim he makes. I am the way the truth, and the life. First, in the, we get this in the book of John chapter 14, verse 1, and this is where our reading begins. John 14, 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. This is what Jesus was telling his disciples. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and I'll come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know. We don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Let's take a let's pause there. You've hung out with this person for like almost three and a half, four years, and he says. You know me and you have seen God. I don't know about you guys what your reaction would be. But he goes on to say, uh, Philip said, Lord, then show us the Father. That, that, that would be enough for us. Verse 6, Jesus answered, Do you not know me, Philip, even after I have been with you, among you, for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe in me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe in the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do these works that I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So this is the evidence Jesus is giving to them. So allow me to break this down to you, chap chap. In these three fundamental claims that Jesus makes. I am the way. Literally, Jesus was teaching and was claiming absolute 
and exclusive access to God the Father. You could not find or know the Father anywhere apart through him. So he was saying, I am the exclusive access. Nobody can see God. I am the access. If we, if we were to use terms, if it was that way, it's the gatekeeper. Nobody can go there. But it's not gatekeeper. Because he was saying, and I'll explain this, but that you are actually seeing the Father. Can, can I try and give you an example? So, um, uh, those days when you used to give Christmas cards, do we give Christmas cards anymore? We don't, eh? Okay. Those days when you used to give Christmas cards, when I was much younger, a teenager, uh, we would get many Christmas cards and my dad would sign them and send them to friends and relatives. And so one of our relatives was a senior government official. Senior government official where they had APs. Okay? All right? So you have those APs, uh, administration police. Okay? So you couldn't access them. So this is my rela. Sindomi was going. Before he was not nominated uh, uh, by the president. Now he was nominated by the president, whatever that. Uh. So I knew their house, and my dad said, since that is to your way, it was just not far from the church we were going to drop this thing at Uncle So and So's house. So I went. He was called Uncle Peter. We went to the gate, and I gonged on the gate. I rang the bell. Kama kawaida. Yeah, you're doing this. And a cop just came. AP says, Yes. I'm like, I'm going. Where are He took it. I was trying to look in the gate to see if I can come in. You know, things have changed once you get. But later we called my uncle. They were not home that day. But that man, that cop had the audacity to say, you've given this to me. Mefika. Jesus is saying the same thing. I am the way. You see me, you see God. I am the truth. Jesus was claiming to be the source of all knowledge. The source of all knowledge. You think you know, Jesus knows it all. This is the, this is the, this is the argument and debate that I have with my son. He can't imagine that I don't know. Sometimes I think when he asks me a question, I say, you don't know. He says, useless. This father of mine, you're supposed to know all these things. And like I told you guys last week, he's trying to say, who made God? I told him, I don't know. And he has this disappointed look on his face. Anyway, but Jesus is the, is the embodiment and the source of all knowledge. And lastly, Jesus is making, his, is making a claim that I am the life. Jesus was claiming that all creation, everything draws life meaning and existence in its essence from him. So let me break it down quickly and we'll go. I am the way. This is the first claim. Jesus was making this emphatic claim to be the one who has the only and direct access to God. So his audience, these were the disciples, needed to understand this a bit better. So in this context of what was about to go down in a few hours, in just a few hours from this, Jesus was going to the Garden of Gethsemane and he was about to be arrested. Jesus was actually giving them a foretaste, a foreshadow of what was just about to happen. Okay? By Jesus saying that, that he was the way, he was alluding that he is going to die. And by his death, there will be unfettered access to God. Okay? And these guys knew what he was saying because there's no medium that you have to get to God. No medium. No medium that you need to get to God. Just Jesus. Invoke the name Jesus and you have God's attention. And this is, ex this is, this is how I want to explain it this way. Okay? By Jesus dying, Christ died once and for all. Nothing can come into God's presence if it is not holy. Nothing. God hates sin. So you and I cannot access God's presence. We can't because we are sinners. We can't. Always make 
You can't. But because of Christ, we read this in Ephesians chapter 2, because of his mercy, because of his grace, he has made this possible through Christ. It is by grace you have been saved. This is not of yourself. Nobody can boast. It is the gift of God. It is through faith. It is the gift of God. This is what Christ was alluding to. He's saying, I am the way. Just watch me. I suggest that he was saying that he is the way in a couple of ways. One, that he and God are the same. I just alluded to that. And let me read this to, to break it down more. The writer of Hebrews says this in Hebrews 1. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. We know that. Sindio. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. Check this out. Verse 3. One of my favorite verses in the book of Hebrews and in the, one of my favorite verses in the New Testament. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Mm, 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 mm. Hey, do I need to expound more? Let me expound more. Paul was just saying this, okay? Paul just breaks it down a bit, a bit more simpler than the writer of the book of Hebrews in, in, in 1 Timothy 2.5. For there is one God, one mediator between God and man, okay, who gave himself as a ransom for all. Drops mic, exits the building, stage left. Second thing, Jesus was saying he is the way by saying he modeled it. Jesus actually modeled it. He was telling Akina Philip, okay, you're asking this thing, but check the way I have lived. It was a, a life of, I mean, I am God, but look at what I'm doing to you guys. You guys are supposed to be worshiping me. You guys are supposed to be giving homage to me. You are supposed to be lying prostrate. You are in my presence. But what have I done? I have served you. In just a few moments, he, was, he, he had already washed their feet. Service and humility. One that focused on, and, and let's look back these past couple of years that you guys have got to know me. What have you seen? Uh, uh, it's focused on righteousness and justice. It was one prioritized of reaching out to the poor among them. The orphans, the widow, the sick, the outcasts, those at the periphery of society, those who are excluded, those who have been marginalized. He expressed the love of God. And John later says this in 1 John chapter 3. Let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. John was expressing that he saw this about Christ. He is the way. The way to God is love. And it was epitomized in how Christ lived on earth and how he loved those, especially at the fringe of society. Lastly, lastly, guys, Jesus meant he was the way and called others to follow. And how does he call others to follow? We kind of did it today, about 30 minutes ago. Pastor Sam left us here, tells us to die. Ouch. If you want to follow me, be prepared to die. Hey, hey, hey. Jesus calls us to a life of submission and death to our ways. I heard this once, I'm saying, if you want to crack a joke for God to laugh, tell him, God, these are my plans. Uh -huh. Some of you will get that later. Let me break it down this way. Luke telling his disciples, and the guys who are around him in Luke 9.23 says, if anyone would want to come after me, they must first deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. You hear the politicians using the, you must, you must, uh, everyone has to carry their cross. Everyone has to carry their cross. I don't think they understand that. You know, this thing now with scholarships in Wasingishu, Akila Mutu Abebe Okay? No, this is different, man. 
This is different. The different thing is, is your sinful nature and your way has to take the highway, man. Out. Out. Check it out of the door. Follow Jesus. And the call of to follow Jesus and to be a disciple of Jesus is to die. Die to yourself. Paul again says this to the Galatians. Guys, I don't know what scripture you guys are talking about. You have to follow all, culture, all cultures so that you can be holy. No, 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 no. Just die to yourselves and these practices. In chapter 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But the life, but, the, but Christ lives in me. The, the life or the way I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus also died. There is no substitute. There is no other way but to die to yourselves. And today, when we took communion, we are accepting and acknowledging that this is the way we want to follow. We are acknowledging what Jesus did on the cross and that three days later, he rose from the dead, a new person. Paul continues to say this, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participate in his suffering, becoming like him unto death. Guys, we are always talking about, you know, the good things and the glory and all that, guys. We forget daily things we always have to do. It's to die. Die to self. I'm not telling you to live a life of poverty, a life of suffering. It is coming. Anyone wants to follow me, they are not going to be loved by the circumstances of this world. Because the world in itself works in enmity to the purposes of God. We are a sinful world. Aosio, we are sinful people. Okay? The, the most common word we say, the common word you all say is me. That's the most common word you say, me, 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 me. Me. Do you know what sin is? Me. Another word for sin is me. Me, 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 me. Me, me, me. Me, 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 me. That's it. Paul goes on to say, somehow attaining that resurrection from the dead. Not that he has already obtained all this or has already arrived at my goal, but he presses on to take hold for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Die. Die to self. Number two, I am the truth. Jesus had been predicting his death to his followers. He was cryptic about it at his beginning of his ministry, but now at the penultimate stage, he was boldly saying it. In fact, he says, it's going to happen through betrayal of one of you guys here. It sparked an argument. And it even told the disciples that the hour has come for that to happen. And it was for his time to go. And they asked him, go where? Because they didn't understand. They didn't understand that it was, it was the way of the cross. And they wanted to follow Jesus, but Jesus pointed them to say, me, 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 go here, go here, as I have explained. When he says that he is the truth, then he is now getting a reaction from Philip. And Philip here says, okay, show us, show us the Father, okay? Show us the Father. This will be enough. Because what you're saying, I, I get you, but no, just let's see the Father. Let's see the Father. And his colleagues probably agreed. Just saying, you have actually been interacting with the Father himself. Me. You see, truth is based on knowledge. The best knowledge one can have is by experiencing it. Sindio. So these guys were experiencing the truth and knowledge of God. By Jesus saying he is the truth, he is actually saying that he is the embodiment of all knowledge. 
And this, guys, needs to resonate. If you know your Old Testament, Jesus was like gangster when it came to using Old Testament scripture. Yeah? He was like old school. See what I did there, okay? Proverbs 9 verse 10, he says, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And that's what he was alluding to. If there were guys there who was like, they would have been, you know, doing finger snap. But I think these guys were confused. The disciples were actually interacting with all knowledge itself. Literally, if you don't know, now you know. Hey? Interacting with God, all omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, this God, you are actually interacting. I don't know if you guys understand. This is just, it's too big for my head also. And I have a big head. So John expresses this in John 20. Again, he tells them why he's writing these things. He says in John 20 verse 30, Jesus performed many other signs and pre in the presence of disciples which are not recorded in these books. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life. So guys, in the study of philosophy, those of you who, who, who did philosophy in a university or college, there are four main branches. I don't want to go on explain them. There's logic, metaphysics, ethics, and epistemology. These are different ways of how you can break down truth or knowledge. So in essence, Jesus was having a philosophy 101 introduction to philosophy class with these guys. And he was explaining him that truth is by directing them to his person. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Verse 11, believe in me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe in the evidence of his work. Works. See, towards the latter part of the first century, when this book was written, the general thinking of that day was that the spirit cannot exist in natural form or a physical body. And, and that the spirit cannot, because the body is, cor is corrupted. And by doing this, they said, now you can do anything with the body because the spirit is a different thing. And they were living in licentious living. They were doing anything and everything. And you think of any wrong thing you can do. They did it. And John is writing in that context. No difference from where we are today. John comes with a different idea. Disabusing this notion. He actually says to his audience, Indeed, the spirit can inhabit the physical. In fact, God did it in the person. Jesus is not a reflection of God. Jesus is God in the reflection of God. Jesus is God himself. Embodiment of all things. Let me summarize this. Best verse that I also like in the New Testament. Colossians 1 15, 16. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, where are thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am out in just another three or four minutes here. Please allow me to borrow from last week's sermon. I said, and I'll explain more. Having raised Lazarus from the dead, we read this in chapter 11 of the book of, of John, um, Jesus had effect effectively shown that, that he was the author of life. And moving forward, his imminent death was now coming. 
And this death was going to be different. It was to, it was to pay off for all the consequences of sin. Isitoshe. Okay, if I was in the coast. Isitoshe. Okay? His death will correct all the past sins, all the present sins, and all the future sins. How powerful is that? It was and is done by his resurrection. And by Jesus coming to life, Jesus here is saying that he's the one that makes all things new. He is that, what is that thing? Control F5, is it? F5? That factory reset on your phone. He's that. He makes all things new. By his resurrection, Jesus shows that he is the one who makes a way where there is no way. By saying, I am the life, Jesus is saying, I was raised from the dead and can resurrect that which is dead and that which is lost. Last week I challenged you. I said, guys, what is dead? What is dead in your life? What is dying? Christ can turn it around. Bring it to the cross where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. That which is dead, that which is lost, Christ can resurrect and bring back to life. He's saying, I am the author of life itself. I make all things new. I turn your mourning into dancing. Your weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So you ask, Goi, what, what, how does this help? So what? How does this help Erethram growing in the South Rift Valley? Guys, if actually truth for you, be an ambassador for it. Be an ambassador. I have a friend who is ambassador type. See how I roll? Eh, 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 yes. So, I like goofing off. Okay? And I play pranks on my friends. I don't play pranks on my wife because, hey, hey, she's strict. Even tickling is hard. But anyway, eh, eh, so I don't play pranks there. But I play pranks on my, on my, uh, uh, on my friends and all that. But this friend was a country representative of one of these big intergovernmental organizations. To say, I know people also, eh? Okay? And I'm playing, we're goofing off and playing that, and suddenly he says, I'm out. I'm not playing this with you. I'm like, yeah! Uh, he's a party pooper, man. Okay? He's a, he's a wet blanket. So we don't invite him to many of our, you know, our men shindigs. When we're doing something, even if you're going, imagine you're playing in the pool. He can't, like, play in the pool the way we play in the pool. I don't know if you understand what we are saying. You know these grown men playing like little boys. You know what that looks like, yeah? Alright? To us men, it's okay. To some of you, you're like, these are grown men. Anyway, he won't. Why? Because he represents this international government organization in a country. And if he is found goofing off, one simple picture can just, you know what I mean, eh? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like, ah, okay, <laughs> it's cool. You go with your ambassadorness, <laughs> okay? But he represents this huge intergovernmental organization. So he's aware, either on the clock or off the clock. He's there. He holds it. The security akonaye, garilake. I mean, he can't. He, he has to account for where he's going. Because he represents this huge intergovernmental, global intergovernmental organization. I want to say the same for us. We need to be aware of whose label we carry at all times. Christ lived on earth and he was the embodiment of God the Father. Aware of this. He lived like it. We can do this, guys, vicariously. 
as ambassadors of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you of Christ, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Be the ambassadors of I am the way, the truth, and the life. And secondly, walk in confidence because Jesus is risen. Jesus is alive. I've met, I've met sales and marketing executives, some of you here in this congregation, who can swear by their brand. <laughs> Even, I mean, put their own reputation for this brand. You know, sales and marketing execs, they sell. And many times when they're selling, they're selling not just because of the brand, because commission in a camp. Yeah. <laughs> they put their entire reputation on their brand delivering because they have confidence in this product or service. But you, we all know brand people, I'm not seeing, I see you, I see you, I'm not standing your way. Uh -huh. My influencers. Uh -huh. <laughs> but we all know Brands, these products, and fail. They have defects or malfunctions. And services are operated by individuals who are fallible. And they can fail. Systems and services and products are challenged. And I would say, I would say for the same thing, we can challenge these things if this brand says it can deliver and we can prove it can. But on this brand, Jesus the Christ, who is the first, the last, the living, the one who is and is to come. This is the real deal, guys. First Corinthians 15, 17 says, And if Christ had not been raised, your faith is futile. Bure kabisa. Matope makaratasi ngelia ma. You are still in your sins. Then verse 18 goes on to say, Then those who have died in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are all of people most to be pitied. Without the resurrection of Christ in our story, everything is meaningless. However, and the truth is, guys, Jesus died and rose from the dead and is Lord of all creation. Hallelujah. This is the basis of what we believe. This morning, as I personally took my communion, I said, God, I do this because I believe. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through the man, Christ Jesus. For as Adam all, as in Adam all died, so in Christ all are made alive. This is the truth. And there's physical and eyewitness evidence to prove that. If there's any foolproof brand that you should be associated with, is Jesus the Christ. Therefore, because Christ lives, we can face tomorrow. We can face whatever hardships that are going through, knowing that God is going to pull through or come through for us. We can now have a greater appreciation of the confidence that the psalmist says this, and he had written this, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So I ask, even when facing death, death has been swallowed up in the victory. Where, oh, death is your victory. Where, oh, death is your sting. The sting of death and sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through Jesus the Christ. So walk in confidence. Walk in confidence that Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, thank you that we can come to you in confidence. Oh, ho, ho. We can come to you in confidence, knowing that, Father God, you listen to us. 
that we can receive mercy and find grace and help in our time of need. And today we acknowledge that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And it is in this day we are gathered here. May these truths ring true today and the rest of the time, Father God, you choose to have us on this earth, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Hallelujah. If this is making sense to you and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, you have not previously acknowledged Jesus is the Christ, maybe this is an opportunity for you to do that. Please, come and talk to Pastor Sam or myself after this. Or drop us a line on our WhatsApp thing. Pastor Sam or I, we're going to get back to you. And we can talk about this a bit more. And work on this faith journey together. Jesus is the way, truth, and the life. We've come to the end of our service today. Those of you who are visiting for the first time, please don't be in a rush. We have uh, 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 some refreshments that are there for you. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, we have some refreshments for you. So please, 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 please don't be in a hurry. Uh, kindly do that. If you're sitting next to those people who raise their hand uh, and all that, just lead them, lead them to there. And, and please get your refreshments and come and meet Pastor Sam. I kid you not, not, not more than five minutes. He just wants to say hello to you and, uh, and just let you know a bit more about who we are. So after you have your refreshments, just come right here and just meet him for about five minutes. Then we will release you as you choose to go. Wanawake, oh yeah? Wanawake, oh yeah? Wanawake, oh yeah? Our Binti Women Ministries have their monthly fellowship this uh, coming weekend, Saturday, on the 26th, okay? Right here, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. So ladies, uh, your Binti Ministries is meeting. Uh, so welcome, welcome. And bring a friend. Sindio, bring a friend. Bring another Binti over here. Let's all be upstanding as we close. Father, your people desire to be more like you. But our sin and us, we get in the way. Forgive us, Father God. We thank you for the resurrected Christ who makes a way where there is no way. This week, will you resurrect the things in our life that are seemingly dead? Breathe life into this faith journey. If it is our regular Bible reading, breathe life into it. If it's our prayer and our time with you in prayer that is dead or dying, breathe life into it. If it is a marriage that Father God is tithering on, on separation or divorce, Father, breathe life into it. Father, if it's a relationship gone bad that needs to be restored for your name's sake, breathe life into it. If it's a career, Father God, that has reached a dead end, breathe life into it. Father God, if it is, Father, a, a, a place and season in life that seems that they have reached a dead end, Father God, breathe life. If it is a parenting situation where, Father God, all that has been tried and attempted seems not to make any effort, breathe life. These hands, Father God, that you have given us, this mind, Father God, this heart that you have purposed to give us, Father God, for this week, breathe life, breathe life, breathe life. That Lord God, this week we'll have a testimony of the resurrected Christ in our hands. Bless your people today in the name of Jesus who died and rose again and is alive. And all God's people say, Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.